Hey guys, um, we're going to do a quick review on decimals in chapter 1. We, um, we're going to be talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimals. Uh, we're going to quickly kind of go over the least common multiple and greatest common factor about how we achieve that using the Venn diagram. Of course, you could use the listing method for either one of those, uh, but I think the Venn diagram is going to be helpful. Um, we'll, we'll see. It depends on time. I don't want to go too long in this video. My, my goal is to hit about 10 minutes. Um, hopefully not longer than that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> if I were to ask, what is the least common multiple of two numbers? And let's say these two numbers are, let's make them a little bit more uh, easier, not, not too difficult. Let's say 10 and 12. <clears throat> Of course, one method would be using the listing method. The listing method is basically where you just list out all the multiples of 10. So it would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and you basically just keep going. For 12, same thing, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, and so on. And the goal is to stop <clears throat> until you get to your first common multiple that you have in common. And this is the least one, right? This is the smallest one. There are going to be more down the road. Uh, for example, um, it would be the next one, obviously, would have to be 120. Um, so t Because 12 can go into 120. So 120 would actually occur down here somewhere uh, for both of these, okay? And that could be another common multiple, but this is not the least common multiple. The least common multiple the smallest one, if you will, is right there. So the least common multiple is 16. So that's that's how we do that for least common multiple. Now if I said what's the greatest common factor between those two, right, the same numbers, um, you can do the listing method, which is basically just list, list out all the factors of 1 and 10, list out all the factors of 1 and 12. So it would be 2, 5, I think that's it for that one. For 12 it would be 2, 6, 3, and 4. And of course, there's always going to be a 1, right? Here's a 2. There's another factor of 2. And I don't see any other factors that they have in common. So 2 is going to be the greatest common factor. So I'll put GCF on that. Okay? That's using the listing, listed, listing method. Uh, again, it's not the best way to do it, but that's just one way. Okay? And that's, that takes a little bit more work. Uh, some people like it, though. It's more the traditional way. The newer way is using the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram, um, a lot of people like um, because you can kill two birds with one stone. You can get both of these answers uh, in, in one effort. Okay, So what we do here is we use the prime factorization first. So prime factorization is just breaking it down to its factors, but prime factors. And so you have... 10 and 12, so you think of, okay, what, what two numbers make up 10? Well, let's say 2 and 5. And basically, you just keep going, and you keep breaking down each number until you get to its prime numbers. And no other number can go into 2 except itself or 1, so this is prime. So I circle it. 5 is prime as well. There's nothing else that goes into it. I circle it. So those are the prime numbers, prime factorization of 10, 2 and 5, 2 times 5. For 12, you break it down, you, let's say we get 2 times 6. Well, 2 is prime, but 6 is not. 6 is still composite. You can break that down to 2 and 3. Now that we've reached all our prime numbers, the prime factorization, again, of, of 10 is 2 and 5, and the prime factorization of 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And so here's the Venn diagram. So this circle represents 10, and this circle represents 12. And then what you do is you find out, okay, what do they have in common? They have, they do have 1, 2 in common. So that's going to go in the middle. That's what they both share. But what they don't have in common is going to go on the outside in their own circles, respective circles. So 2 and 3. Okay. So 2 times 2 times 3, that gives you the 12 circle. And then 2 times 5, I know it's a little bit backwards here, but 2 times 5 gives you the, the 10 circle. So this is what they have different from each other, and this is what they have in common. <coughs> so 
This right here is called the greatest common factor. That's the greatest common factor. Now, if you have another number in here, which sometimes you do, or multiple numbers, you would multiply all the numbers in that shared area. That would give you your greatest common factor. For the least common multiple, what you do is you just multiply all the numbers that are listed right here. And if you do that, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. So the least common multiple is 60. So that's one way of doing it. So instead of doing the listing method and finding out uh, this way, you can do prime factorization, list out all your factors in its respective circles in the Venn diagram, find out your greatest common factor in the shared area, and then all the numbers being multiplied together gives you the least common multiple. So hopefully that, that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, that's something, again, one way or the other, uh, you can find out both of those answers relatively quickly. Okay, it's going to take a couple minutes. All right, now let's talk about decimals. Now, adding and subtracting decimals <clears throat> basically have the same type of rule. The big thing is you got to line up your decimals. Okay? You have to line up your decimals. If you don't line up your decimals, you're subtracting the wrong numbers from each other. And the digits are going to be all, all over the place. So, uh, let's say I was going to, um, let's say I made... Ten dollars uh, doing something yesterday, and let's say I went to the store and bought something for uh, five dollars and twenty-nine cents. Okay, and I want to know how much change I have left over. Well, you want to make sure, obviously, the first number is your larger number, typically, right? Sometimes you can. In seventh grade, we'll talk about subtracting, uh, having negative decimals, or in this case, kind of like negative integers or rational numbers. Really, it's what it's called. Um, We'll talk about that later, but for now, we know that the largest number goes on top. We subtract 529. You see the decimal lines up right here. The 29 goes underneath the two zeros. And then you just, you borrow, right? Make this a zero. This becomes a nine. This becomes a nine. This becomes a ten. You subtract. You get $4.71 left over. Okay? That's a typical decimal problem, especially with um, subtraction. Um, but let's say you're subtracting something and it's not quite clear. Like, let's say we've got 5.1 minus 3.862. Okay? In this situation, you still want to do the same thing. You want to line up the decimals. 5.1, 3.8, and then put your 6 and 2 here. Kind of exaggerating it a little bit. I'm moving it over a little bit to the right. Put a little bit more space there. I'm being a little bit intentional just so that you can see that the 6 and 2 are going to fall under basically nothing, right? So this 8 is under the 1. So since there's nothing here, you want to, and I say add with quotations, you're not really adding. You're just putting something in its place to hold the place value. So basically you just subtract it like you normally would. Like let's say this was 5,100 minus 3,862. Same concept, no different. Okay, even though this is a decimal, this is not in the thousand. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to borrow from the first number that you can. Make this a zero. This becomes nine. This becomes ten. So this is eight, three, and then we've got to borrow for this. Make that a four. Oh, we forgot. We didn't add a ten to that, so that's a two. All right, and a lot of times what I do is, uh, before, when I get my answer, I just add mentally to make sure I've got the right answer. Because subtraction is not my, my strongest suit. So 8, eight plus 2 is 10. 0, 1, carry the 1. 9, 10, carry the 1. 8, 10, 11, 1, 1, 5. Okay, perfect. So I added it mentally, and it's, it's correct. Now, that's just adding and subtracting. Okay, adding, same thing. If I were to, um, let's say, instead of add, uh, subtracting them, I decided to add them, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to line up the decimals and solve. Okay, same thing, 5.1, 3.862, if I decided to add them instead, I would get that. Okay, now, uh, we're getting close to our 10-minute time, so let's, let's go straight into the dividing. Okay, now, uh, normally, oh, I know we, we broke this up a little bit. If we had a decimal, let's say 6.3... Um, Let's say 3. And I want to divide that by 9. 
okay? You basically then solve it like you would any other number. The only difference is this has a decimal. So what you want to do is, since there's no decimal in the divisor, go ahead and bring up your decimal straight up here, and then you should divide. 9 goes into 6, not possible, 0 times. 9 goes into 63, 7 times, right? So 7 times 9 is 63. Okay, subtract, bring down your 3. <clears throat> right? And then what we do is add a 0, bring that down. Oh, I forgot to do something here. Uh, before I do that, 9 cannot go into 3, by the way, right? So that's going to be a 0. Now, bring down the 0 here, 9 goes into 30 3 times, 27, and then you got 3. Add another zero, bring it down. If you notice, this keeps repeating, okay? And we haven't talked about this yet, but you're not, uh, on a test, uh, you're not going to have a repeating decimal like this. Uh, but if you do, you're going to put a line above the three, because what happens is it's going to continue to say three, 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 and this is going to go into infinity, okay? But let's say instead of dividing by nine, because we haven't talked about that, let's say we just divided it by three. Okay, same thing. Bring your decimal straight up. Bring down the 3. Goes in again one time. Okay, and that would be your answer. So that's typically what you would expect in 6th grade. 7th grade, we're going to be doing repeating decimals. Okay. So don't worry about this too much. Just understand that you're going to move the decimal straight up. Now, if we're dividing a decimal by another decimal, okay, let's say we've got um, 3 point for example, and I've got, uh, let's say, 64 point, um, let's just say 64, right? Let's just say 64 for now. You don't want to divide by decimal, so you have to make this a whole number. So you want to move this decimal to the right one place. Obviously, we're going to have to add a zero here because there's nothing to move around. You want to move the same place, whatever you move over here, you move over here. So if I had to move twice, you move twice over here. So I'm only moving once in my divisor, so I'm only moving once in my dividend. So once I move that, now I can divide. I just move this decimal straight up. Now it's no longer a decimal. It actually becomes 32. The decimal goes over here. So 32 goes into 6. Nope. 32 goes into 64. Yes. Two times. Bring down your next 0. 32 can go in 0, 0 times. And that's going to be it. So 3.2 can go into 64 20 times. Okay. So that's the big thing. In multiplication, <clears throat> if I was multiplying uh, two numbers, let's say um, 1.98 times 4.2, if I wanted to find the product of this answer, I'm going to basically just put the one that has the most decimals on top, even though it's just technically smaller than that one. I'm going to put it on top because it's a little bit less work to to multiply those two, if, if this is on top. It's less, less lines I'll have to add at the end. So you just basically multiply like you would, like they're regular numbers. 18, 19, 2, 3, 0. Uh, this is uh, 32. 36 plus 3 is 39. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. And then you add it all up. 12, 13, 8. Now here's here's what you have to do. This is the most important part, is you count how many decimal places the decimal had to go to get to here, to go from here to here. So you're going to count, okay, one, there's two places here. Here, there's only one. So only one decimal place value here, one. So what you do is you add that up together, that's three. So I'm going to move this a total of three. So one, two, three. And the decimal is going to end up right here. Okay? Uh, another way to kind of solve this, and I know we're getting close to 15 minutes here, way past what I expected. But the last thing I wanted to say before we uh, we close here is this. Make sure, feel free to estimate, okay? So if this, if, again, if I treat this like money, let's say this was money, all right? I'm going to say 198 is close to about 2 bucks, and $4.20 is close to about $4. If I multiply that, mentally, I should get around 8 
it is around 8, which is a little bit above 8. But the point is, you sometimes you want to estimate just to make sure you you're on the right track, okay? Because if I didn't, if I had estimated and said, okay, it's going to be eight, and let's say I just messed up. Let's say I did, I just um, for some reason didn't add them, or I let's say I did two and I forgot about this one here, and I moved it two times to the left, and I got eighty-three. That should give me some pause and go, wait a minute, uh, that number's way too big. What did I do wrong? And so maybe that'll help you retrace your steps and kind of figure out, okay. I didn't add these correctly. I need to move it three times instead of two. Okay, that's the answer. So it gives you a little bit more confidence when you can estimate uh, beforehand. I don't typically do that, uh, but it's a good practice. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, have a great evening. Uh, God bless, and hopefully this will help you uh, in your Chapter 1 test. God bless. All right. Bye-bye.